Hello, chaps. Quick question. What's the strangest effect how to do? Or the dangerous or the most disappointing? Um, I don't think we ever did anything dangerous, well, as far as I, as I can remember. Um, what were the other two? Dangerous and what? Disappointed Dis and strange. Strangest disappointing. Disappointing. Oh, I, th I think the most, right, sorry about that. I think the most disappointing thing, I mean, we did these two spinning heads of the first two Doctor Whos for a, for a, a dimensions in time. And um, do you know what? The, I, what I love about Doctor Who, the ambition of it is always up here. But you just, sometimes there's just no, and it was a great idea because everything in that had to, it revolved around the fact that it was 3D. And I think they wanted to represent the first two Doctors. And, and I think it was Mike, good old Mike said, no, no, I've got a good idea. What if we have, Steve can do a portrait of these two and we'll, and in, in, a, in, a, in effect, it felt like a good idea. But I, you know, I, I think the mistake, I, one thing that was our fault was that I think I should have put some collars on them because at least they would have looked like projections or something, whereas they look like a couple of severed heads <laughs> whizzing around the, the thing because you don't normally see so much of their necks. And um, I thought perhaps they'd have some effect on them, but I suspect you couldn't because they want them as clear as possible for the 3D thing to work. So I, they were brilliant, not by a long chalk, but within the context of that episode, they were all right. But I'd say that's the most disappointing. Um, yeah, sorry about them. <laughs> yeah, and certainly the animatronic cat from Survival was um, a disappointment. So we were asked to come up with an animatronic of a black cat because they said the real cats couldn't be trained, which was true. You'd open the bag, the cats would come out, they'd be gone. So the, so the animatronic got pressed into service far more often than had been intended. Um, cats are one of those things that you as a person know exactly what it looks like, what the fur looks like, how they move, how they sit. So anything you get wrong is just suddenly, oh, there's something wrong with that. And it, it's, it was that moment where we brought it out of the bag on location and half the crew had to go into the next room <laughs> round the corner and just laugh until they could come back and look at the puppet without, without literally tears running down their, their cheeks. And um, it's a story I've told. It's one of the, um, one of the gaffers on the show. Um, he felt very sorry for us. He got on very well with the effects crew. and He, he pulled me to one side and he went, I see you can have some trouble with the cat. He said, I've spotted that there's a black cat just round the corner. Give me the nod, I'll catch it, gut it, and you can stick your hand up it and use that instead. And it was like, Vic, Vic, leave the cat alone. Don't touch any cats. So, um, <laughs> so, so, so we had to calm him down from that. But again, nobody went into that thinking we will do this badly. It's just one of those things that didn't quite work. And I think if we'd been smart, we should have said to the writer, don't make it a cat, make it a cat-like alien. And then any slight changes, like its ears had been longer, or its eyes had glowed, or its tail was weird, or it had an extra you know, joint in the paw, you would have got away with it the, the way we, we did with Fifi, in that it's not a real animal, it's, it's an alien. And therefore, if you go, it didn't quite move the way I expected it to, you could have passed it off. But trying to do a real cat was ambitious. It's a really difficult thing to, to achieve, yeah. even on a, a, a feature film budget, you'd be hard pushed to make that, that work. Um, so most dangerous, was that one of the questions? Yeah, yeah. questions. That was something that almost happened, didn't quite happen. On, on Happiness Patrol, I think there was a moment where they wanted to put the Candyman suit with the actor in it down a huge pipe. Remember that? Yes, yes, yes. And I, I was sort of taking people aside going, I don't think that's a very good idea. <laughs> um, in the end, they didn't do that. They just used the prop skeleton version that Visifex had made. 
Um, what were the other two? Strange. Strange. Disappointing. Oh, disappointing. Uh, would be something I didn't do, I suppose. When we did the Sontarans for the new, new series recently, when I was initially asked to do it, we were asked to do the whole lot, the prosthetics as well, which I was really quite keen and excited to do. And then before we'd actually started, just as I got like a good prosthetics team ready on board up for doing it, the line producer phoned me and said, you're, you're, you're not going to do the prosthetics, we've got our own makeup people that are going to do them. So that was the most disappointing. That was so, disappointing. Yeah, because I, I would have loved to have done the whole thing. And when I was like, I don't know, 12 or something, I actually sculpted a lynx mask, Sontar mask, um, replica my, myself. So it would have been a, a lovely thing to actually make the ones for the show. Um, you maybe really can't say it, but I can say it. Mm -hmm. I wish you'd done those prosthetics. <laughs> they're, yeah. That's all yeah. they say. Yeah. The costumes are lovely. Yeah. Is it next? Oh, is it, is it, is it, is it, no, we're over, we're over to the audience. We've got another question. Aha! 